Got a shot fired at officers trying to stop the vehicle. We have uh, one officer shot. We got shots fired. Sound like an automatic firearm. Copy, covered. Shots fired. We have an active shooter. We have an active shooter inside the fairground. <laughs> Now it's Shots Fired with your host, TJ Kurgan, Dinah Death Milberg, and the lovely Crystal Powers. What's up, Missouri? How are you guys doing today? It is TJ Kurgan, a.k.a. Sig Glock and Colt. I'm your local suburban warlord, and I'm here today to talk to you about your freedom. You know, I'm like the Jehovah's Witness that knocks on your door every day to talk to you about your Lord and Savior, the Constitution, and how the Constitution, Second Amendment, gives you the right to protect yourself, your family, your loved ones, your property from evil and tyranny, and also gives you the ability to protect the most important amendment, which is the one that allows me to speak into this microphone right now without a gun to the back of my head, and that is the First Amendment. You see what I did there? Anyway, I, uh, I'm a little ticked off today. Um, you've heard Alex and I, Dinah Death Milberg, uh, talk about the gun community. And I, I'll admit, um, I have trouble calling it the gun community. I don't even know where that, where that came from. You know, social media, um, the, the gun thing on social media seems to have really gotten its its start back in 2013 um, where gun owners all over America started following pages that were promoting Second Amendment, promoting training, promoting guns and gun parts and gun gear. And, you know, this is all in a post 9-11 world where the world was a dangerous place and ISIS was bad and scary, scary, you know, and, you know, all these guys are coming after you. And that was the boogeyman, right? And so, then we had, uh, then then we had the uh, the shooting uh, in 2013, Sandy Hook. Uh, then we had a bunch of political act action against the Second Amendment, and that really made that gun social media, gun related social media posts. It it drove it, you know, with that fear, because fear is the ultimate marketing thing. It doesn't matter what you're selling, if you can if you can promote it with fear, people will buy it. Fear of you know, getting sick, fear of losing value in your home, fear of losing value, the resale value in your car, fear of, fear of getting a large repair bill in your car, auto warranty, right? Fear is the biggest seller. So, so the gun industry, you know, saw that and they capitalized on it and the gun community was born. Basically what the gun community is, is a, a bunch of gun owners, millions of gun owners on social media. Um, that all like or follow the same type of stuff, right? And the, the problem is, is it's a very, very cannibalistic community because it's not truly a community. You know, a community is a group of people that live in the same area or region that, that take care of one another that support one another, that help raise each other's children, that help raise crops and food and keep each other alive and keep each other healthy and keep each other sane. That's, that's my definition of a community. But on, uh, on social media, the gun community is the most toxic place on earth. And it really, it really is, unfortunately, a sliver of, of Americana as it is right now. You know, the American thing, right? If you, if, you, if you say, okay, just let's take all the social media people, everybody, it, it doesn't matter what color they are, it doesn't matter what sex they are, it doesn't matter they're, you know, they're, it doesn't matter what they're into, you know, and you just take a slice of it, you know, a, a data slice, and you and you look at it, it's very polarizing, right? Everybody hates each other, and everybody gets offended, and everybody has an opinion, and everybody wants to, wants to force their opinion on other people, and, uh, and, they're, and they want to influence them, they want to argue, they want to hide behind the keyboard. We call them keyboard warriors. Um, you know, and there's just tons of hate and discontent in the American community on social media. And I think the firearms community is just as bad. Seemingly, we would think 
that the firearms community would not be like that. Because seemingly we would think that the firearms community would be largely conservative, largely patriotic, you know, largely pro-constitution, largely pro-self-defense, largely pro-national defense, pro-military, you know. Not that everybody that owns a gun feels that way, but you would think that as a group, it would be a community where the majority kind of agreed with one another on most things. But unfortunately, that's not the case. The gun community is made up of so many factions. And it's just absolutely ridiculous. And it's almost become meme culture uh, where it's it's in vogue to hate. It's, it's, It's cool to cause drama. It's cool to cancel. You know, the gun community is the first one to stand up and, and say and, and, and point their fingers at liberals, even though liberals own guns, and point their fingers at liberals and say, you guys, your cancel culture, you know, it, it's horrible, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, the gun community is just as bad as soon as something happens, a needle drops. As soon as a needle drops, the gun community, these, these toxic neck bearded mom's basement boys get on social media and try to destroy companies, brands, people, organizations. And and it's just it's just crazy to me. So there's been lots of lots of drama in the gun world on social media in the in, in you know years past. Um, this person th- this moment in time, what I'm talking about is an organization that honestly is near and dear to my heart. I don't know them personally. I've talked to the founder on the phone for hours. Seems like a really good guy. He's got a great idea. And in my opinion, they are one of the organizations that does the most currently to fight for your Second Amendment rights by actually suing attorney generals, states, federal government, president, uh, you know, they, they literally, I think right now they have like 33 lawsuits going, you know, and I'll go through those after the break, but it's called Firearms Policy Coalition. Firearms Policy Coalition and Gun Owners of America are two organizations that I promote all the time in lieu of NRA, in lieu of NRA ILA. Because those organizations have become toxic. They've become bigger than life, too big to fail, bankrupt, morally, ethically, and figuratively. And they've become combat ineffective in Washington, D.C. because they've become part of the swamp. Firearms Policy Coalition, FPC, also known as Gun Policy on Instagram, they are one of the young and -and up-and-coming organizations And Gun Owners of America, another young up-and-coming organization. Firearms Policy Coalition leans more towards the lawsuit and the legal side. They're a non-for-profit. And so they do things. Like I saw they had a a thing out a while back that if you were in Illinois and you had a FOID card and you wanted to carry a gun but they weren't letting you, you know, to contact them, you could become a party to the lawsuit. You know, that's what they do. They, They find people and sue government on behalf of those people, and they use charity-related money to do so. Well, anyway, Firearms Policy Coalition, like every other organization on Earth, hires people to manage their social media. Now, I don't know who those people are. I don't know who who pushes the buttons. You know, at at my company, Tactical SH Asterisk T, we have several employees that have the ability to send out a tweet that have the ability to send out a post or a reel or a you know a, a, a upload a YouTube video and so and those those people have a huge responsibility because if they say something or do something wrong it can get the company in a lot of hot water and in this case firearms policy coalition yesterday found themselves under attack by the by the gun owner um uh, the, I would call it the the neckbeard of mom's basement boys, but it's really bigger than that. I've seen I've seen tons and tons of actually influential people in the gun industry, friends of mine, actually going after them as well. 
And I, I haven't said either way on it because it's uh, it's one of the, it's so bad. It's so bad. I don't even want to talk about it. But what they did, uh, I don't know if they were baited into it or what. But they are a legal company that is that is run by attorneys. Uh, you know what? After the break, I'll tell you what they did. It's a cliffhanger. All right, we're back, and I left you with a cliffhanger because Firearms Policy Coalition, FPC, has found themselves in hot water, big-time hot water. Like, so hot, I've been dancing around the subject for the last 10 minutes because I don't even want to bring it up. Oh. I'll tell you what, before I even go into this, I am going to throw out a disclaimer. At Tactical SHT in St. Peter's, we sell a shirt And it says, kill your local pedophile. Because we believe that pedophiles don't deserve to breathe air. I personally believe that pedophiles don't get to breathe air. I wish it was legal to dirt nap them. Unfortunately, it's not. Because they have the right to live, I guess, under, under the Constitution. I don't agree with it. But whatever. We sell the shirt. The shirt is, uh, is is an amazing shirt. I wear it all the time. And it's funny because I watch for people's faces. I wait for somebody to be offended, and then I'm going to be like, you are a pedo, kitty toucher, right? Can't just smoke them because that's illegal. That's the, that's the point here. But anyway, the reason I'm talking about pedophilia is because... Obviously, with all the, you know, everything in the, on the left right now and the Hollywood and all that, the gun community has been hugely anti-pedo, right? You know, with the, uh, the Epstein trial, the fact that we weren't able to see who the clients were, you know, all of that stuff, all of the cover-up. We got, we got Dr. Sniffing stuff as the president of the United States, literally, literally creepily sniffing children on a regular basis on TV, and we, he, he gets elected. By a landslide. Biggest election ever, right? Because you believe that. But anyway, so pedophilia is top of mind all the time right now. And what had happened was, supposedly, I'm, I, I see some proof of it. I'm not exactly sure of the context. But somebody had, according to the screenshot uh, on the meme page that started this, uh, this whole debauchery, um, the ag- the accusation is that Firearms Policy Coalition um, that someone tweeted uh, that uh, that pedophiles don't have rights. Okay, which I agree with the statement. Pedophiles don't have rights, and unfortunately for Firearms Policy Coalition, their social media person, probably a lawyer, replied to that tweet or retweeted that tweet with the statement: "Read the Constitution." And the world exploded. If you think about it, what he said was legally and factually correct. The fact that he said it is he he got baited. Or I say he, it could have been a woman. I don't know. Have no idea who runs their Twitter account, right? Probably some intern. Could be a marketing company. We don't know. I think it's important that Firearms Policy Coalition comes out and says who said it and why they said it and what context they said it because when you have a situation like this you need to own it and you need to own it very quickly which they uh, they tried to do somewhat yesterday but nonetheless when i first saw this beginning to fester and, and and flash fire out of control i thought to myself wow what if this is just mom's demand action george soros And the anti-gun libs, what if this is somehow just a planned event where they baited FPC into saying this? Or did FPC really say it? Is that the context of the screenshot? Because when I look at the screenshot, I don't know Twitter. I don't know how it works. But it looked to me like the person that said pedos don't have rights replied to FPC saying, "Read, read the Constitution. I might be wrong there. I probably am because nobody else is bringing that up. Uh, But when I first heard this, I thought, what if this is a planned attack on one of the biggest threats the gun grabbers have, which is Firearms Policy Coalition? And if so, wow. It's, they fell for it. 
the gun community fell for it. And the gun community for the last 24 hours has been doing their best to destroy Firearms Policy Coalition on social media. It's been an absolute SH asterisk T show. It's kind of sad. I can, I, I you know, it, like I said, I think pedos don't agree, uh, don't uh, get to breathe air. I don't, I don't think they should be allowed to live. I think death penalty should be, you touch a, a child in a sexual manner, parking lot execution outside the courthouse. You don't even get a free sandwich. But I'm not in politics. Nobody's elected me. I haven't been able to get that bill passed. So unfortunately, it's not legal to do those things. And that's not how the system works. I will do everything I can in my power on the, with this microphone and my platform in social media. And it has nothing to do with the gun community whatsoever, but I will do everything I can to fight against grooming and pedophilia. It's just freaking disgusting. But uh, what I see happening here is I see a coordinated attack on an organization that is doing work to protect the Second Amendment, one of few organizations actually succeeding, winning lawsuits, constantly filing lawsuits, um, and actually getting the job done. And, uh, you know, one little slip up, although it was a heck of a slip up, one slip up, uh, these guys run with it, and it just becomes a piranha attack, you know, just an absolute cancellation uh, attack. And it's been going on. Now, the, the, the good news for Firearms Policy Coalition is what I've noticed is that the gun community has a memory span that's about two weeks long. So, so Firearms Policy Coalition is going to see some damage here. They're, they're gonna, they're, their donations are probably going to go up. I'll explain that in a minute. Their, uh, their brand is going to be tarnished. They're going to get a lot of people talking a lot of bad stuff about them, most of which is probably not true, but it's accusatory. Uh, based on a on a third party statement from a social media employee, and uh, you know it's going to be over in like two weeks. How? Why do I think that? Because it happens over and over and over and over again. Usually, it's it's not about pedophilia for Christ's sake. They should have never touched that tweet. However, um, years ago, back when Hillary for prison was a yard sign. Springfield Armory, you know, the guys that make the Saint rifle. Springfield Armory actually was caught making donations to Hillary Clinton's campaign. The, the, the entire gun community lost their collective SH Asterix T, <laughs> as they should have, you know. And, uh, and that was, it was, there was calls to boycott, yada, yada, yada. And uh, it, it blew over. People now, all you know, all these guys that used to comment all the hate—they're they're all rocking Saint pistols and, or I'm sorry, Saint rifles and uh, Grip Zone pistols, XDs. <laughs> uh, it's happened many, many times. Just a few weeks ago, more, guess what? About two weeks ago, maybe a little more. Uh, the CEO of uh, was it Daniel Defense and Ruger both praised the ATF live on TV and everybody said you know what let's 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 not get any more Daniel defense rifles or Ruger rifles oh, yeah that's over all right <clears throat> so we're talking about this disaster with firearms policy coalition and how in the gun community air quotes uh, they're very very cannibalistic and and how this has happened in the past and there's about a two-week memory span this has actually happened uh, to my company many times obviously never anything as bad as this but it was close it was close I think we should have some story time now um, there has been times where uh, where it you know I've had comments made on social media by an employee or even by myself I actually said something one time in a podcast one of the reasons why I'm scared to death to be on this radio show is because it's live, folks. Something could come out of my mouth at any moment that could get me in a world of SH asterisk T. And that's why I pause every once in a while, I think. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes you say things you don't mean. Sometimes things are taken out of context. It's, it's part of being human. 
Now, maybe, maybe the person they hired for their social media is a kitty toucher. And if they are, they should be fired, which is probably against the Constitution, but they should be fired. Um, in my case, though, we actually had a post. I, I woke up to this one one morning. We had pissed off. Oop, we, had, uh, we, had, we had made angry the entire black community of, uh, of the gun world. And, uh, and I was trying to figure out why. And this was right after the George Floyd issue. And uh, one, of my, uh, one, of my, one of my employees had, uh, had posted a meme um, that was in reference to the George Floyd event. I'm not going to say what the meme was. I don't want to start the whole problem over again. But it was, it was funny, but it was extremely offensive. And it ruffled the jimmies of an entire race of the gun community. And we heard about it. We heard about it big time. Um, we admitted that it was wrong. Um, and we, uh, we terminated the social media employee that posted it. It, it was just, you know, you had, to, you had to own it. And then we dealt with it. On another instance, though, on a podcast one time, um, I had said something in reference to a shooting event. It was a shots fired podcast, but back before we were actually on the radio, I had said something about a shooting event uh, in another nation uh, that was taken out of context by a local uh, newspaper reporter who has it out for me. Uh, and that newspaper reporter posted an article about me that made me look like an absolutely horrible human being um, and uh, very, very anti a certain religious uh, group of people. And what really, really sucked about that event was a lot of my best friends were of that religious connotation. And so they even stopped talking to me. Not only did I have my name in lights and my company under attack by organizations, I was literally called by the mayor of the city we do business in and told <laughs> that if I don't stop, he's going to make my life miserable. And it wasn't in those words. Religious leaders all around town from all sides of religion, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, they were all calling for our boycott of our company, all because of something I said on a podcast that was taken out of context. The statement I made was bad, but it was made as a tongue-in-cheek joke. But when they take the words and they print them, you don't hear the sarcasm. And that's what happens on social media. It's the same thing as when you send texts to your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend. And the, the emotion is not conveyed in the text message. Sometimes you read into it and you think, well, that was he must be mad. She must be mad. But they weren't mad. They, it's just words. And that's the problem with social media is that people take things out of context. And, and the problem with humanity and specifically the gun community, obviously, is that when somebody does something wrong, people attack. And when one person attacks, they attack in droves. It becomes a pack attack. Everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon, the boycott bandwagon, the, the cancel bandwagon, the hate bandwagon, because they want to see this company suffer because of its action that offended them or hurt their feelings or went against their beliefs. Personally, I'd like to see the gun community change that, but I don't think it will. I've been in this gun community my, my, most of my life, but the social media part of it since its inception in 2013, I'm one of the OGs. You know, I would say I'm not, I, I don't go back as far as, uh, as uh, FPS Russia. <laughs> But uh, I go back a ways, and uh, I've seen this happen over and over in this community. And I just I feel bad for the actual organization, Firearms Policy Coalition. I don't feel bad for the social media person. You know, they made a mistake. They should be punished for it. Do I think they should be tarred and feathered publicly? No. Should they lose their job? Yeah, probably. It was a bad decision. It was a bad decision that led to damages. And now it's all about damage control. Uh, Firearms Policy Coalition tried to uh, own it head-on yesterday. 
And I will read you their, their statement in just a moment, which, of course, was not well received. Sometimes stoking, uh, sometimes when you, when you confront it head on, it's, it's, it's inviting more exposure and more hate. But that's what you have to do to grab the bull by the horns. So their post yesterday, uh, 22 hours ago, was FPC does not support evil, period. We never have, period. And we never will. Period. We can't believe we even have to say this, comma, but we'll say it again, comma. We do not support effing, and it's spelled out, there's no, there's, there's no apostrophe, effing pedophiles, exclamation point. And uh, that was their tweet, which they then posted on the Instagram. Instagram is where the gun community seems to live, especially the industry. It's, it's probably the hotbed of patriotism in the gun community. And, uh, and, and Gun Policy said when they posted a screenshot of this tweet, can't be any clearer than this. There are 2,985 comments to this post with 17,000 likes. Now, the more comments a post gets, the more reach it gets. So by owning this, they're exposing the problem to more people. That's part of the, that's part of the, uh, it's part of the game you have to play. It's part of the, uh, it's, it's, it's the, it's the obstacle, but it is also the way that you have to tackle this head on. But here's your, here's your comments. Uh, change your handle to groomer policy. And uh, it's, uh, that's too dirty. I can't read that one. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Okay, groomer. Oof, too late. Groomer policy. It's just just one bad comment after another. <laughs> Wood chipper rentals matter. Uh, you know, you could go read it for yourself if you want. It's at gun policy on uh, on Instagram, and it is also at gun policy on Twitter if you're into Twitter. And you can kind of see what they've done and what they've said about it. And now they've gone about business as usual, um, posting the lawsuits that they're uh, that they're posting and. And some other legal things. And it's funny because the the next post they made three hours ago has 162 comments. And uh, I would say, as I scroll through the comments, here's an OK Groomer. Groomer Policy Coalition. You know, there's, there's not... A ton of hate anymore. It's already flashing out. You know, the, the the attention span of this mindset is so ridiculously small um, that it's already petered out. You know, they have another post from 12 minutes ago. It has six comments. And uh, there, there's some bad ones. These people actually think those who touch children should have guns. Cool, but we want y'all's side of the story on defending pedos. You know, so people are still you know calling on them to address it further. They want to know more. They want to know who said this, why they say this, and what are you going to do about it. And I think that's what they should do. You know, if it was the founder who made the post, well, maybe he needs to step aside. You know, I actually. This actually happened to a cigar company. You know, I like smoking cigars. I smoke cigars every day. One of my favorite cigars for years was Gurkha. Gurkha Cigars. They, uh, they admitted on their social media, uh, Kaiser Hansodi, the, the CEO and founder of, of Gurkha Cigars out of Miami, he had posted a pro-Trump social media post during the 2020 election. Actually, it might have been, no, I think it was the 20, what was the one before that? It was the 2016 election when he was running against Hillary? I think it was the one before that. And the, the libs came after him. Evidently, a large percentage of the c- cigar-smoking populace is leaning to the left. And they came after him with a hate campaign. You know, And who knows if it was even really his customers, but he got scared. And what did he do? And I, I lost all respect for him. Uh, he stepped down as the CEO of his company over a pro-Trump post because it upset the liberals in his fan base. And he was afraid, fear, 
motivates everything. He was afraid that he was going to lose all that money, lose 50%, 49% of his of his customer base. So he literally stepped down as the as the owner of the company or as the CEO of the company. He remained the owner of the company, but it's really just a a very public, okay, yeah, we fired him. It's okay, we got it, boys. It happens all the time. We see we've seen that happen in the uh in the gun world where uh I'm trying to remember who it was. Somebody at some point had made some really bad choices in uh, in political comments and political support of candidates, and uh, and they were a big gun company. And so, uh, oh, it was X Products. It was X Products. This is another one. Only lasted about two weeks. X Products is a huge company doing very well today. They have the flamethrowers. They have the can cannons. But people forget that the founder of X Products was caught donating money to anti-gun organizations and anti-gun liberals. At least I believe that's what happened. Uh, and he stepped down. He stepped down as the as the head of the company. And then two weeks go by, everybody forgets, and now everybody's out there shooting can cannons and flamethrowers at each other. Um, you know, we've all had the problems. Tactical SHT's had the problems. X Products has had the problems. Springfield's had the problems. You know, I could go on and on and on. Um... But uh, if you handle it properly by owning it and attacking it head on, you know, you can survive a social media nightmare of the cancel culture. I guess what I really want this show to, to say, though, what I'm saying here is that we as gun owners need to work on mending the fences of our community and building relationships with all the different factions in our community in order to create an alliance so that we can fight tyranny and evil rather than fighting each other because that's all we do. And right now, the wolf is at the door. And we're fighting each other over a comment or over a tweet. This is how we get defeated. A nation divided, a community divided. All right, the final segment and my final thoughts on uh, this whole thing. I think I kind of laid out my final thoughts in the last segment. I did find it was X Products' old owner, okay? And this goes back to... uh, Oh, way, way, way back. Recoil Web reported this story uh, on five years ago. Five years ago. Effective immediately, James Malarkey is no longer X Product CEO after controversy. You know, and, and it says last week we reported on the Malarkey controversy, which was surrounded by his multiple 2A co- a- anti 2A comments, uh, blah, blah, blah. So, what it effectively was was the founder and CEO of this machine shop that ended up making gun parts was anti-gun in his personal life. And uh, and that was bad for the brand, right? He made some comments. He'd made some donations. But again, it isn't... what If, if I just want to... If I want to say anything, it isn't forever. The social media is forever. If you make a post, it stays out there forever. Just like I can find this article by searching. As soon as I type in X products into Google, it says X products owner anti-gun. It suggests that for me. Right, So everything you do on social media stays on social media forever. However, in the minds of your customers and your fans, some things stay forever. Yes, it can be tainted. You can leave a bad taste. But the storm from something like this typically only lasts about two weeks. And I've seen it happen again and again and again. And uh, I just wish, like I said before, that... That the uh, the gun community would would stop hating on each other. Let me give you some examples. Some of the stuff that's become meme culture. Glock fanboys. That's what they call anybody who likes Glock. The Tupperware pistol. You know, and that that dates all the way back to the movie The Fugitive, right? Versus. The Fuds. They, that's a reference to Elmer Fudd. A Fudd is an old guy, a boomer, another derogatory comment towards old people. A boomer or a Fudd. A Fudd is a boomer that says things like, I believe in the Second Amendment, but. 
You know, and th- those are the ones that are the biggest problem because they allow for concessions like bump stock bands and arm brace bands and trigger bands and 80% bands and all the things that we've seen happen over the last couple of years. And it's just going to chip away at the rights over and over and over again because the FUDs allow it. But nonetheless, the Glock fanboys and the FUDs, so the FUDs, they like 1911s. They make comments like the 1911 won two world wars, right? And so they they hate the Glock fanboys. The Glock fanboys hate on the 1911 guys, the FUDs. I'm not saying all FUDs are 1911 guys, but it's it is part of the stereotype. There's a lot of stereotypes in the gun community. And uh, my my buddy KD Kevin Dixie from No Other Choice Firearms said it best. I think he said it to me one time on a Shots Fired podcast. He said, "Just because we own guns doesn't make us friends." Just because just because I'm a gun owner and you're a gun owner, we don't have to be friends. Matter of fact, it's pretty clear. A lot of bad guys have guns. That's why good guys have guns. So owning a gun doesn't make you a good guy, nor does it make you a good person, nor does it make you a member of my community. I think, though, that anybody who is a Second Amendment advocate or an influencer... And the people in the industry should do everything we can to try to promote positive culture and positive social media surrounding the gun community. And anytime we see festering hate, discontent, and uh, and this 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 meme culture, we need to condemn it because it is bad for the Second Amendment. If Firearms Policy Coalition stops getting donations because of a tweet that a social media intern did and that was taken out of context, I'm sure, and it really isn't out of context, if you boil the BS off of it, have you read the Constitution again. Unfortunately, the Constitution gives rights to pedophiles. I don't agree with that. You probably don't agree with that, but it's a fact. And that's what lawyers do. They present facts to win cases, to win arguments. This was an argument they should have never took up, but they did, and now it's caused this fallout, this flash. But we need to stop. We need to stop trying to destroy organizations that are literally fighting to protect our rights. That is what the left wants, and that's what we're falling for here. I guarantee you this is some sort of Soros-designed thing. Don't think that there's not mom demand action, social media trolls out there trying to bait firearms industry companies as well as the big dogs, gun owners of America and Firearms Policy Coalition and the NRA. There are people out there trying to bait them into doing this very thing because they know what it will do to them. But a minute ago, I said that their donations will go up. Why did I say that? Even though the hate will last for two weeks and they will have a damaged brand, they will end up getting, they will see a spike in donations for the next couple days and they're going to be like, what the F just happened? Where'd all this money come from? And it's because all PR is good PR. That goes back to the 50s, folks. All PR is good PR. Because for every one of these trash talking internet, keyboard commandos that are saying that they're, you know, calling them groomers and pedos and all this stuff. All, every one of those comments is tickling that algorithm and making those posts go further and further and exposing Firearms Policy Coalition, although in a negative light, to people that had never heard of it before, which is getting more and more follows. More and more followers. Just, like I said, you had 2,900 and something negative comments, but you had 17,000 likes. And then you, you start seeing today, you start seeing the fans of Firearms Policy Coalition coming to their defense, finally. But it takes some kahunas to do that. Because then they're just going to say, oh, you're, you're a groomer too. You're a pedo too. You know, I would never ever come to their defense if I thought there was any truth that the organization as a whole or its founder or anybody that benefited from its, you know, whatever, was a pe- pedophile. Could there be pedophiles in its ranks? Yeah. They're everywhere. It's sick. But until it's legal to hunt them, I don't know what we're going to do about it. 